Bonjour à tout le monde. Ok, um, we did a passé composé already. We did a passé composé with the verb avoir and the verb être. Uh, I did a presentation, I put it online. Now let's see what happens when the passé composé, in, in, in this specific case, we'll do passé composé with the uh, avoir, with uh, the auxiliary avoir, which is uh, to have. Uh, what happens when um, you have a COD? with um, avoir in the passé composé. Let's uh, see what that means. So, <clears throat> we have a general rule in that with avoir, um, in the passé composé, does not agree in gender and number. So, this is the example that I gave you. Louise a parlé, look what happens. Louise is feminine, right? It's a feminine subject. Uh, a parler means has spoken. Parler does not take the extra E just because Louise is feminine. Why? Because the general rule says that with avoir, uh, the past participle, which is parler, I remind you, um, does not take the feminine or the plural is the subject is rule. So basically it doesn't agree with the subject. This is only with the verb avoir, because with the verb être instead, there is the accord, there is the agreement with the gender. So, <clears throat> having said that, we must say, though, that there are exceptions. So, the rule changes when you have a, a pronom d'objet direct in front of the, um, the, the verb. So, um, I, I made a presentation uh, for the pronom d'objet direct. I hope uh, by now you have watched it. Um, if you didn't, go back and, and see it. Um, and uh, if you if you uh, if we did watch it and you want some uh, a refreshment, you want to review it, to just go back and watch it because it's very important that you know what the pronoun uh, are pronouns are to understand this rule. So le pronom de je dirais again I put it in parentheses here is uh, le, la, elle, elle, and we know that they. Uh, substitute the subject in a sentence when you don't want to repeat the same uh, name or noun many times. I, I gave you in my previous presentation uh, um, uh, some example, some examples. Here's the examples that I, the example that I'm giving you in French. La pomme, which means the apple, je l'ai mangé. See what happens here. La pomme is the subject. Je, it's me. All of a sudden, not to repeat pomme, I put the uh, pronoun de je dirais, le manger. I have eaten it. That elle apostrophe would be it. It's just that in, the, in, in, the, in, in French, that's where you place it. We did it in the presentation uh, with, with the pronoun de je dirais. So I'm just refreshing and just reminding you how it works. But look, at what I want to get to is, see, elle is the pronoun de je dirais. And he substitutes the pom, which is apple. Pom is feminine, so all of a sudden, look what happens. Manger, the participe passé, takes an extra e because it's feminine, and you have that little l apostrophe there. So all of a sudden, now the general rule gets uh, it's subsided, um, and uh, all of a sudden, the participe passé, the past participle, agrees with the gender. So, la pomme, je l'ai mangé, spelled with the second E. Okay? So, that's your rule. Now, what happens with, avec le pronom que? At this point, you should have done with your teacher um, in school, you should have done le pronom que. If you did not do it, and if you're trying to learn the language by yourself, I would put a presentation also briefly um, on uh, le pronom qui et que. But que basically means that in English. So let's see an example to be more specific. La fille, la fille que j'ai vu. The sentence obviously means the girl that I have seen. So that que means that. So look what happens here. La fille is feminine, right? Que is the pronoun que, which means that. J'ai is the... Um, passé composé with the verb avoir, 
um, and all of a sudden, look, you add an E for the family because you have the pronoun K. Okay, so the girl that I have seen, la fille que je vu, all of a sudden, the rule, the main rule that uh, avoir does not take the, uh, the, 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 the agreement gets subsided, gets subsided uh, here too because you have le pronom que. So look at this example. La fille que j'ai vu e. Okay, you had an E at the end. This is with the pronom que. Okay. Now, we have a problem here. This is very complicated, but we'll try to do it together. Le passé composé with avoir and when it's followed by an infinitive, has a lot of exceptions. And uh, it takes uh, uh, the agreement in some cases, it doesn't take the agreement in some other cases. This is only when it follows the, uh, an infinitive. What does that mean? Let's see. I'll give you the same, i give you the same example. La fille que j'ai vu, et now you have an extra element to the sentence. Before it was just la fille que j'ai vu. Now you have la fille que j'ai vu marché. So that marché will be your infinitive. So the verb that is not conjugated. So this sentence is very awkward. You have la fille, which is the subject, and then you have le pronom que, that I just explained to you means that. Then you have the auxiliary avoir because it's passé composé, we're doing passé composé with avoir. All of a sudden you have the past participle that takes the agreement because you have que, right? Remember? With que it takes the agreement and fi is feminine, so you have to add an e. And all of a sudden you have another verb here in definitive. So la fille que je veux marcher, it's the girl that I have seen walking. Okay, that's what it means literally. So you have je vous marcher, three verbs in the same sentence. But it, it exists in English too, that I've seen walking. It's the same thing in French, la vie que je vous marcher. But now, what happens with this other example? Les chansons que j'ai entendu chanter. You don't take the agreement here. Les chansons is plural, right? And uh, <clears throat> que, it's a pronoun que, Je entendu, entendu doesn't take an S because les chansons is plural, because des chansons do not do the action of singing, but they take the action of being sung. So there's not agreement. So it's a very complicated rule. Okay? This is probably the most complicated of all of them, all of the exceptions. Uh, so, which one is the rule, la règle? The past participle, followed by an infinitive, takes the agreement only when the COD does the action, does not take the action. So let's go back to the example. La fille que je vous marche, she's doing the action of uh, walking. The girl is walking, right? Instead, les chansons que j'ai entendu chanter, uh, the, ch the, the chansons, the, the songs, they have been sung. They don't do the action of singing, okay? So all of a sudden, you don't add the S at the end because it's plural, okay, uh, and, and feminine. So entendu les chansons, it's plural feminine, should be a ES at the end because it's plural feminine. But they don't because they receive the action, they don't do the action. And this is your first exception and uh, the rule with this exception. Now, let's see the second exception. Les étudiants que je fais marcher. Les étudiants, it's plural, right? It's the subject is plural. All of a sudden, no, you have fait. With faire, the participe passé does never take uh, the agreement. So les étudiants, like I said, is plural. Fait doesn't add an S because les étudiants is plural. Why? Because we fait, faire, with the verb to do, faire, Every time that you see that in the sentence, there's never an agreement, general rule. So this is a little easier to remember because, oh, faire, automatically you think, oh, faire, there's not agreement. Les étudiants que je fais marcher. No S, F, fait. That's it. Done. No S over here because this verb right here 
it's an exception, does never take the agreement when it's followed by an infinitive. Remember that we're always doing the fact that it's followed by an infinitive. Okay? So look at this example very carefully. Règle. Passer composé with avoir plus faire followed by an infinitive does not take the agreement. So I just explain it to you. You have the passé composé with avoir right here. Then you have the verb faire. And then you have a, uh, the verb faire, it, it's, it's followed by uh, an infinitive, marché, right? So faire does not take the agreement. That's your second exception. And I found it a little easier to, to understand and to remember than the first one. Third exception. Let's see. <clears throat> you have this example here. Les papiers qu'il a vous copié par la photocopieuse. So look at this example. Les papiers, it's the, 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 the subject is plural, right? All of a sudden you have a vous copié. A, the verb, uh, the auxiliary avoir. Participe passé is vous. Vous does not take an S because papier is plural. Does not take an S. Why? I circle right there because par is your other exception. Just like par, when there is par in the um, sentence, there's not agreement with the subject. Okay? So you have your. <clears throat> your exception right here and you have your rule passé composé with avoir plus infinitive plus par does not take the agreement so remember that in the sentence again you have to have the passé composé followed by an infinitive an infinitive these rules apply only when it's followed by an infinitive and the passé composé with avoir so your rule, right, your exception here is with par. Every time that you have a passé composé followed with, a, with um, um, uh, an infinitive and there's par in the sentence, does not take the agreement. That's your third exception. Fourth exception. All of the following verbs do not take the agreement with the passé composé plus avoir plus infinitive. So remember, again, only applies when it's followed by an infinitive, when passé composé is followed by an infinitive. So all these verbs, now you have to remember that they do not take agreement. So just like faire doesn't take an agreement, affirmer, cru, di, I already put all these verbs in the past participle for you, okay? This is uh, it's like saying, j'ai affirmé, tu as cru, il a dit. I already did the uh, past participle for you, the participe passé, and I, I, I put it down for you. So all these participe passé, all these part participle, do not do not take a s or e, uh, depending if, if it's uh, feminine or plural. If the subject that is speaking is feminine or plural or singular, plural, and so on and so forth. Do not take the, they get they get spelled exactly the same way that like you're seeing it right now on this presentation, like this, because. The, the rule says that these verbs do not take the agreement, okay? And not get confused you with the promis, promis because promis it's uh, the, the participe passé as an S uh, to begin with, no matter what the subject is speaking. So that's not because it's plural or anything. It's just the way it's spelled in the participe passé. Okay, so let's see some um, practical examples. Les arbres, plural, qu'il a voulu abattre. See, I underlined voulu for you. I underlined it. So voulu doesn't take any s because les arbres is plural. Okay? Why? Because I just explained it to you. Voulu is one of those verbs that it's an exception and in the passé composé with a war, plus infinitive does not take the agreement. Here we go. Broke it down for you. Sujet pluriel, voulu uh, doesn't take the agreement. Okay, let's see this other example. Les vêtements que j'ai dû acheter. Les vêtements is plural again. Que, remember, means that, the pronoun que. J'ai dû acheter. I had to buy. So, les vêtements, plural, do, right here, does not take the agreement. Why? I underlined it right here. It's one of those verbs that it's an exception, so it does not take the agreement. Okay? Last example. 
elle s'est laissée courtiser par son voisin. Again, laissé. I underlined it with you. It's one of those verbs. So, elle is plural. But laissé doesn't take an extra e just because. Uh, sorry, I said plural. I meant uh, feminine. Um, elle, it's feminine. Does not take an extra e. Uh, because it's feminine, because they say it's one of those verbs that it's an exception, okay? So this is your fourth exception, and what you need to do is basically memorize these verbs, or uh, I think that uh, the more you practice, the more you're going to remember uh, w which are the, one that, uh, the ones that do not take the agreement. Um, that's what happened with me. I just... just I know that these verbs don't take it, and uh, and this is uh, something that you hardly have to worry about when you write down, because when you speak, you don't hear that there's an E or an S most of the time, so you don't worry about that. When you write, you take so much more attention, and you have so much more time than in the spoken language, that you remember that laisser or do or blue don't take an agreement. Okay, fifth, and I think is the last exception, participe passé does not take the agreement with the, in the passé composé plus avoir plus infinitive. Remember the rule; it's always with infinitive, and the pronoun en. The pronoun en, it's like a, a, the the pronoun que. Um, you should have done it at this point. If you didn't do it, I'll put up a presentation um, with the pronoun en. Uh, the pronoun en, uh, um, it's um, basically um, refers to a quantity. Um, let, 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 let's give you this example. Des bonbons gênants manger plusieurs. So, not to repeat bonbon again, you're saying that you ate bonbon is, uh, is candies, right? You're saying the, the, the candies, I have eaten them a lot. I have eaten a lot of them. So, instead of saying the bonbon again in English, uh, you replace candies with them, right? I haven't eaten a lot of them. You don't say, oh, the candies, I haven't eaten a lot of candies. You say, the candies, oh, I haven't eaten a lot of them, right? You replace it with them. Same thing in French. You have Jean. Uh, des bonbons, j'ai un mangé plusieurs. So that means that um, un substitutes bonbon. It would be that them in English. Is that clear? So when you have that pronoun, en, un, um, in, in French, uh, you do not agree uh, the past participle manger right here with the bonbon that it's plural, right? You don't put uh, you don't put an s here because the bonbon is plural because it's just the way it is. It's an exception with the pronoun un. You do not put the agreement. Okay. Here's how I broke it down for you. Sujet pluriel un. Jamais prend l'accord, never takes the agreement, and that's it. So, this is uh, the end of the presentation. This was very complicated because there's a lot of rules, a lot of exceptions uh, to remember. But in any time, you can go back and watch the presentation. And after a couple of times that you watched it, um, you will more likely start getting the, the, the gist of what you need to do. Um, and like I said, this is mostly in the, in the written language that you really have to worry about. I'll put up, uh, along with this um, um, presentation, I'll put up a couple of exercises that you uh, can just um, click on the link and get them. But you can find exercises online anytime to practice this. So what I suggest is that maybe you have um, uh, the exercise in front of you with, uh, with the rules that i just given you in this presentation, and then you'll see that. Um, everything's going to fall into place and once you start practicing then you will remember so good luck with this this is this was probably the hardest rule that we're going to cover and um, I'll see you next time thank you for following my um, podcast bye bye now